Malky, biologist and plant expert with Ivory Organics, where we grow cool plants. And today we're here in Northern California in a food forest with over 100 fruit trees. And in this video, I want to share the significance and the importance of sunburn as well as gamosis that's affecting this nectarine tree to my left. Some of the trees you'll see to my immediate right is a black um, fig variety, and then to the right of that is a green variety of fig. Behind me is an um, Asian apple um, tree and behind that a persimmon tree. And you may see way um, about 300 yards behind me is my dad picking some citrus. Uh, looks like he's got some lemons um, in that fruit catcher. And then again, we're gonna be focusing on this nectarine tree to my left. And then there's peaches and plums, apples, um, nectarines, more nectarine trees. Um, I see an almond tree and it goes all the way down to some um, pomegranates towards the end. So huge variety of trees but let's get started by checking out this nectarine tree come and get a little closer here Pop. So here we are now on the south side of this nectarine fruit tree, and you can see that it's got a quite, you know quite a few um, fruit on it, at least a, about two to three dozens. And um, let me share with you here the fruit. It's still about another couple of weeks away from being ripe. Looks like there's some damage up here on the fruit. But let's take a look at the inside of this here. It's still quite sweet. Delicious nectarine. So we're here on the south side of the tree. This is the side in the northern hemisphere. If you live anywhere in the northern hemisphere, it's going to be the south side of the tree that's going to get the most exposure to sun. And this tree has a severe case of two issues, one being sunburn, and the second is gamosis. If you're coming a little closer now, um, I want to point out to you what's happening here. And you can take a look that there might be quite a bit of shade here as we're still here early in the morning. But if you take a look, this is the sunny side of the tree. You can still see the light that's um, shining all over. And it's not just um, and it's not just sunburn. Sunburn damage would be a discoloration of the skin. Like for example, if you're in the light, so that if you're in the light, um, your skin may change from, you know, whatever its color is to more redness, which may be an indication of first degree burns. Second degree burn may be something more along the lines of blistering and, um, and requires several days of care and lotion and, and aloe vera to, to soothe the damage. Um, but the third degree burn is you've just destroyed your epidermis, which is the outer skin as well as the underskin and may require the need for graft. Um, this is the case in this situation. If you take a look, there is no bark. There is no cambium tissues, which are the uh, underlying bark tissues which transport the waters and the sugars up and down the tree and we're now at the underlying supporting wood structure and take a look at how bad this wood is. If you come in a little closer you'll notice all of these holes which were created by beetles and termites and possibly other wood boring insects and I'm hoping we can find the trail of ants that are also moving throughout the tree and more likely than not they're feeding on, I don't know if you can capture some of these ants that are here on the tree but they've colonized themselves within the tree and are more likely than not in a symbiotic relationship feeding with the termites and the beetles and, um, and pretty much nesting within this underlying wood structure which eventually will hollow out and weaken the central part or what I like to call this the heart of the tree, the main part of the tree. So this issue is all the way from the beginning of the canopy as you can see right where my left hand is and it travels all the way down to almost the base of the tree. It goes down to about this section over here. And another issue I wanna share with you, aside from the sunburn on the south side, all of its life is being preserved by what's on the north side of the tree. But there's another issue on the north side of this tree. This guy's got a double whammy happening. Take a look on the back side now. So here you guys are now looking from the north side of the tree up and you can take a look at all of this sap that's coming out of the tree. This is a phenomenon known as gamosis. Gamosis can be caused by um, fungal, it could be caused by beetles, it could be caused by 
um, a variety of diseases and it's whereby um, the underlying cambium tissue is being damaged and the plant is naturally trying to heal by releasing more sap to create these seals. So what we're going to do today is we're going to treat the sunburn on the south side of the tree as well as the gamosis on the north side of the tree using this product over here which is Ivy Organic. And what we're going to use to treat these two situations is Ivy Organics. It's a three-in-one plant guard protection against damaging sunburn, insects, and rodents. And it's for use on your roses, fruit, nut trees, ornamental trees, and shrubs. Non-toxic, environmentally safe, and organic product. And it's registered material for use in organic agriculture. And when you receive this product, and actually let me share this with you as well. The active ingredients in here include castor oil, cinnamon oil, clove oil, garlic oil, peppermint oil, rosemary oil, and spearmint oil. Many of these oils will naturally repel the ants, termites, the beetles, and all of these pests from entering the tree while the solution here, which comes with this um, bag of powder, it's all organic derived. You can take a look here on the inert ingredients. Also includes iron oxide, limestone, mica, milk, and silica. So all of these products will go into the can with the oil vial, which is right here in bubble wrap. And let's go and add these um, right now to the solution and, and create it. So the first thing here, we're just gonna take the organic um, powder and add that to the can, like so. Just gonna wanna make sure we get that all in there, like so. The next step, as directions read, is you should add water about halfway, like so, and begin mixing. And then add the oil. The logic for following these steps is to make sure that the oil doesn't clump up with the powder in one corner but no matter what you do it will work um, but here we go and now we're just mixing the contents like so and at about this stage the consistency is going to be very similar to that of paint as all of the powder absorbs with the water but what we're going to do now is we're going to fill up the can to the top and now it'll have the consistency of 50% diluted paint. And that's the consistency you want to achieve when brushing this product on. And now let's get started. So here we are, and before we coat the gamosis side of the tree, which is the north side of the tree with the ivory organics, we're first gonna remove the um, sap balls off of the tree so that we can get the ivory organics in contact as close as possible to the tree. So Jack, who's my 12 year old helper, is gonna help me out with that. Do you wanna find one of the biggest um, sap balls? And then if you wanna share that with the camera so they can see what it is. So another important consideration when um, coating your damaged tree is to remove the dead bark and try to get closer to where the cambium tissues are healing. Let's see if we can hopefully see this here. You can see this is all dead bark. We're gonna remove all of this otherwise dead skin and we're gonna to try to get to the point where we can see the living living cambium tissues and you can see it getting right to the edge of it like so. We're gonna peel that back like so. And you can see all that dust that's been created by um, more likely than not some termites that are living within the tree. And then the living cambium tissue is right here. It's that line that's right underneath the bark. And then we're just gonna take our Ivy Organics solution and basically seal all of those wounds like so. And we're just gonna continue that all the way up. And we're just gonna continue that all the way up. And you can see that we've just done our first coat to the top of where the sunburn has ended. And you can see that once you're in the canopy, there's more natural shade created by the upper leaves that are preventing further sunburn as you get high enough. But all of this exposed to sun side of the tree, you know, our goal is to preserve it and heal it. And then we're gonna remove a lot of the dead wood among it, fertilize it, mulch it, water it well, with the hopes that we're gonna get this tree to perform a lot better for many more years to come. So here we are now at the base of the tree. I just noticed another major issue that's contributing towards the lack of life that's happening in this upper part of the tree. Unlike 
the peach tree to my right, if you take a look at it, it's got fruit that are twice as big. It's got a much more beautiful and full canopy than the nectarine tree that we're working on. And one of the main reasons is this girdling that's being caused and the constricting that's being caused by these ties that are holding onto the irrigation um, to the tree. If we take a look over here, if we take off this, this tie, you can see how tight it's been holding onto the tree. This one even more so. So we'll take this one off so you can see what I'm trying to point out in regards to damage to the tree. So I've got my pliers here to undo this for the first time in probably many years that it's been struggling to pull the waters and sugars up and down the tree. And right now this tree can breathe a sigh of relief. As you can see, it's got this line that's going all the way around and constricting the flow of waters and sugars up and down the tree. Whereas now the tree can allow that to move. And now we're gonna remove the second tie as well. And I'm gonna point out to the owner that they need to come up with a better system of irrigation as just dripping a little bit of water on one side of the tree is not gonna be enough. You truly, when it comes to water, you need to soak the entire root zone. Um, one of the lessons we talked about earlier this year is a phenomenon known as mimic rain. The goal is when it rains, it rains around the root zone and the root ball. Just doing a drip on one side of the tree may result in all the water just going and, and facilitating water to one side of the root system and not the entire thing. So they need to come up with a better system than this. But again, we're on the path to helping to recover and heal this tree to give it many more years of fruit bearing health and life. So here's my helper, Christian, who's 10 years old and he's helping me apply the ivory organics to the sunny side. And I'm going to have my helper Jack, the 12 year old, work on the north side of the tree and cover the entire gamosa side. So hopefully we're going to get this wrapped up in the next 10 to 15 minutes. Check this out. So that was like while my helpers Jack and Christian finish treating and caring for this tree, I want to share this article with you from the University of California. Let's check this out. So I got this article from the UCI IPM, which is the University of California Agricultural Natural Resources Program. And this one specifically deals with avocado sunburn. And but what I like are some of these points that are made here. When it comes to symptoms and signs, it says bark, fruit, and leaves exposed to direct sunlight are injured by heating and drying of tissues. And um, I don't wanna go into the whole article, but when it talks about management, it discusses over here that whitewashing young trees, which is what we're doing right now with the Ivory Organic Solution, routinely at planting. So at the time of installation, I wrote over here young. For young trees, you should be routinely whitewashing them to keeping them cool to prevent the issues related to sunburn. And whitewash the trunk and major limbs of older trees. And I wrote over here, even your old trees can benefit if they develop sparse canopies or are severely pruned, such as when cut back to trunks and grafted with new scion stumped wood and the article continues. So, so the tree behind me, as you can see, the light has increased significantly since we started earlier this morning. The tree is in a leaning position, exposed the entire length of the trunk to the sun, whereas if it was more vertical, which is the reason you want your tree growing in an upright position, is to create a canopy to shield and lower and cool the lower trunks and the lower branches. This tree is growing in a completely different design being it somehow got blown over by wind or other issues and now the entire trunk and the entire length of the tree is exposed to too much sun and we saw the effect of sunburn as well as scamosis on the backside with what may likely be caused by fungal but even more so likely due to beetles and termites that are damaging the underlying cambium tissues. Another important tip is Pruning. Pruning is not just reserved for winter and fall. It's also a summertime, you know, process is to look for deadwood. There's no right or wrong time of the year to be removing deadwood out of your trees as these are again more entryway for more pests and disease. So I'm finding all of these branches, for example, this one over here, that we're just going to prune back to the living bark. And you can see again, this is just a dead twig that's lying within the canopy of the tree. So we're going to clean that up as well. Now let's take a look at um, Jack and Christian's paint job around the tree. We're going to take a look at both the north and the south side of the tree. Let's take a look. So 
So as we can see here, we went as low as we can to the base of the tree. We're just gonna go up. We're now on the south side, the sun burn side of the tree, growing all the way up. All of that's been coated. They've then since removed all of the gamosa sap balls as much as they could so that when they start painting, which you can start seeing here, it's basically creating a seal from the entry of any further wood boring insects. And a lot of the oils in this product are also antifungal, which should help and aid in the prevention of further gamosis to this tree. You found this um, educational and informative, Jack and Christian, and you guys learned a valuable lesson on tree sunburn as well as gamosis. And I hope you carry these lessons with you into your future and pass them on to the other friends and family and other people that are interested in tree care as well. If you found this video informative, be sure to like it. Most importantly, by subscribing below, you'll be connected to this and all of the other educational gardening videos by Ivory Organics. Thanks again for watching here in Northern California and happy gardening. Happy gardening. Happy gardening.